Hey everyone, this week I'm going to talk about what I've learned from editing a raw image with Photoshop Elements. So usually I use Lightroom and Photoshop to edit all of my raw images. That's a fairly common workflow amongst professionals and amateurs alike. But today I'm using Photoshop Elements, which if you don't know is a completely separate program to the regular Photoshop, which at the time of recording is Photoshop 2024. And it's aimed at beginners, it's a one-off fee, so no subscription model, you pay your money, you get to keep the software, but it doesn't have quite all of the features that regular Photoshop does, or Lightroom or Camera Raw. So we're going to look at editing a raw image with that, I'm going to see if I can get the usual results that I'm used to with Lightroom and Photoshop 2024. And I'm not going to discuss every single tool and feature, because there's quite a lot in there, but I am going to go through all of the tools that I'm using to edit this image, which I captured in the Bavarian forest in Germany and it was a fantastic foggy morning. I got up early, managed to get out into the forest and yeah, got this image. Let's have a look how I edited this using Photoshop Elements. Okay, so when we open the program up, the first thing we can see is we've got some tools down the left hand side. We've got some options along the bottom here and at the top we've got three modes. So we've got quick, guided and advanced. Quick is going to be your most basic tools, it's designed for beginners to really get into it quickly without too much complexity. Guided is going to give a few more options but with a little bit of hand holding. And advanced is going to open up more of the tools which will bring this more in line with the full release version of Photoshop. So I'm going to be using advanced. You do get some more tools over here on the left. But the main reason I want to use this mode is so that I've got the layers palette down here. If I click on the bottom, it opens up this panel on the right. And in here, I'll be able to see various layers, which will really help me to create the effects that I want in my edit. So I'm just going to bring a raw file into this now. If you haven't installed Camera Raw already, what you're going to need to do, just close that for the moment, is come up to Window, sorry, Help and then come down to install camera raw here and that will allow you to bring raw files into your editor and it will open this window with camera raw so camera raw is kind of similar to Lightroom it allows you to edit your raw file it's not got all of the features that camera raw does in the full version of Photoshop but we do have quite a range of powerful tools to use Okay, so first of all, I'm going to click Auto, just to add a little bit of extra colour, contrast, bringing up the shadows, bringing down the highlights, that kind of thing. But from here, I'll want to tweak it a little bit further. So, first of all, I'm just going to play around with the temperature, going to make it a little bit warmer. and I'll probably just bring the tint to the left a touch, not a lot. The exposure is not bad. I think I can leave that mostly where it is. Have a little play around with the contrast. I think highlights and shadows are all looking pretty good. Might just bring the whites down just a touch. And I think blacks are okay. So when we get down to clarity, this is a slight departure from the full version of Photoshop. Uh, or the full version of Camera Raw in Photoshop in that you don't have a texture slider. So Clarity will give you basically sharpening. So it will sharpen areas with large defined outlines as opposed to the finer details such as grass where texture would be more useful. So I'm just going to bring that down. I like to make my woodland images a bit softer so bringing that down helps there. And I don't want this quite as colourful as it is, so just bring the vibrance down and the saturation a bit. And I think that's okay for those basic edits. I don't need to worry about anything in detail or calibration. There's not really any sharpening I want to do to this. The noise reduction is not necessary. And calibration is just something that's not going to be applicable to this edit. What I would normally do now is play around with the colours using the hue, saturation and luminance sliders in Lightroom, but those are notably missing 
from this version of Camera Raw. And we also don't have any selective editing tools. But what we're going to do is bring this into Photoshop Elements now by just clicking Open. And when we click Open, it will apply all of these setting changes to that RAW file. So you see we're in Photoshop Elements itself now. And what we can do is start to compensate for not having those selective editing tools by using some of the tools within Photoshop itself just to kind of emulate the effects that those selective editing tools would achieve. So the first thing we're going to do is attempt to brighten this area here. We want to create a much more glowing effect and really emphasize that light coming through the trees in the distance there. So what I'm going to do is use a radial gradient. So the gradient tool is here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do before I start changing the parameters of this is to create a new layer. So we need to rename this layer here from background. And that just gives us this option here to convert our file to 8 bits. And this is necessary in order to create our new layer. So I'll click Convert Depth. Click OK to rename the layer. And now I have the option to click this little create new layer button and you see I've got a new layer there now. So coming back to the gradient tool at the bottom here, we've got the options. I want to click on radial gradient. So that just basically means it's round. And I'm going to click on the gradient itself here and I can choose to select my color here as white. It's already set as white down this end, so that's okay. And these top options here basically set the opacity level. So that's set to 100. If I come over to this side, we can set this one to zero. So now we have a gradient going from white, fading out to transparent at the other end. And what I'm going to do is just draw out that radial gradient from the centre of that area, like so. And that's not quite the right shape, so if I just hit Command and T on my keyboard, that'll be Control and T if you're using a Windows PC. I can just squash that up a little bit. So it's a bit more of an oval shape rather than a round shape. You can also rotate it slightly and just double click to apply that and now if I come up to my layers palette with that layer selected I can drop down this menu here and I'm going to select soft light so you see it's not too overpowering if I turn it on and off you can see it does add a really nice soft glowing effect and just to make this really blend in with my image what I want to do is have this tree here not being covered up by the gradient so it looks like the light is behind the tree rather than in front of it. So to do that I'm going to apply a layer mask to layer 1 by coming to the top menu here, coming down to layer mask and click in reveal all. Now I can use a brush tool and I can simply start to paint in with black as my primary colour, so I just need to swap these two around so black is the primary colour there. And when I start to paint in on this layer, you see now it masks out that radial gradient to reveal the tree behind. And you can take a lot more time than I am to do this, but I just want to show what can be achieved using layer masks. Okay, so if you remember, I said earlier that I didn't need to apply any sharpening to this image, which is not totally true, but I basically didn't want to apply it globally to the entire image. What I do want to do is apply it selectively. So what I'm going to do now is duplicate my bottom layer. So I press Command and J or Control and J if you're on a Windows PC. That gives me a duplicate of that original layer. And then coming up to Enhance, Coming down to adjust sharpness and then we can just have a look at this little preview if I just zoom out. 
the main area I want to sharpen is this tree here, so I'll zoom in on that. And we can bring up the amount slider, adjust the radius, and between these two sliders we can get the result that we're looking for. We can leave remove to Gaussian blur, that's fine. We just click OK. And now we have a sharpened layer. So if I hide that, I'll just zoom in a bit so we can see what that's doing. That's with the layer hidden, that's with it turned on. And what we're going to do now is just apply a layer mask to that whole layer and select hide all. So what I can do now is using white as my primary colour, I can just paint that layer back in with my brush. So it's only applying that sharpness to where I brush. So I'm going to do the tree, this little bit of foliage down here, perhaps here, just down in this area. And you can see here the mask that's applied to the layer. We've got the areas in white where it's revealing the layer and all the areas in black are going to be hidden. So again you can take more time than I am to do that but basically we've got now some selective sharpening. Most of the image is nice and soft but the areas that are closer to the viewer just been sharpened a little bit and it just gives a little bit of depth to the image. Okay so like I said earlier we don't have those hue saturation and luminance settings in Camera Raw that we do have in the full version of Photoshop or in Lightroom. So what we're going to do now is try and emulate some of those changes that you can make to hue saturation and luminance using some of the tools within Photoshop Elements. So if I come up here in my panel on the right, just above the layers, and click this little circle, so that gives me a drop down, and from here I'm going to choose Hue and Saturation. This pops up a little window, and in here I can change the Hue, the Saturation, and the lightness of the image. But rather than applying it to the entire image, what I want to do is apply it to individual channels. So first of all I'm going to click the red channel and what I want to do is make this path just a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going to bring the saturation of that up a touch. I'm going to bring the lightness down just a tiny bit and probably bring the hue over to the left to make it just slightly more red. Next I'm going to choose the green channel and I'm going to bring down the saturation here and the hue a little bit and I'm going to do the same with the yellow channel and that just tones down some of that foliage on the ground and that helps to emphasize the redness of the path. Okay and with blues probably just going to boost that a tiny bit and just change the hue ever so slightly. Okay, so I can close that off. If I just hide that adjustment layer you can see it's only making very minimal changes but you really don't want to overdo this. You want to be subtle and that will give you an overall better image in the long run. And so finally I just want to add a vignette and the way I'm going to do that there's more than one way you can do this, but the way that I'm going to do it is to create a new layer and I'm going to use the gradient tool once again, but instead of white, this time I'm going to select black for the colour at each end. So we've got black at both ends now and we've got the opacity set to 0 on the right and 100 on the left. And we just need to click the reverse box just down here. And if I draw a line out from the centre of the image to the edge, 
and in fact I'm going to go slightly past the edge to about there. That's going to fill in a gradient like so. But that's too much at the moment so we just need to set the blend mode to multiply and bring down the opacity until we get to a level that looks about right. And I just want something fairly subtle like that and that is my final image. So what have I learned from using Photoshop Elements? Well the major drawback for me was actually from using the Camera Raw plugin. The version that you get with Elements is nowhere near as good as what you get in the regular version of Photoshop, which is also the same tool set that you get in Lightroom as well. So for example you don't get the texture slider or a dehaze slider, you haven't got those HSL sliders to adjust your colours, and crucially you don't get the selective editing tools. And that is a major drawback because those are really powerful and I use those all the time to selectively edit parts of my image. But I was able to then open the image from Camera Raw into Elements and I could kind of make up for that and use some of the tools in Elements to emulate the selective editing tools that you would get in Camera Raw or Lightroom. I was quite surprised at the number of features and tools that you get from regular Photoshop in Elements. Considering this is a one-off fee, not a subscription model, you do get a lot of tools and that makes it really good value. I won't be switching to it full time, it makes sense for me to be using the full version of Photoshop, but if you are a beginner and you don't want to pay the full subscription fee, this could be a really good option for you. Like I said, I haven't covered everything in this software by any means, but over the coming weeks and months throughout the year, I might do some more videos on Elements and cover some more of those features and tools in more detail. So that's about it for this one. Huge thank you for watching. If you're a regular, I really do appreciate that. If you've liked the video in any way, or you found it useful, please consider just giving me a thumbs up down below. And if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big subscribe button, or over here on this picture of me, and that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. Sometimes I'm doing post-processing videos like this, other times I'm out and about with my camera, but hopefully it's always something interesting. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. Until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.